will do this for me, please? You will? Okay. Someone hasn't turned up. What, his bride? So I said I'd fill in. <laughs> huh? That's a witness, you dummy. You can't get married without witnesses. Why not? So you can't make out later that it never happened. That's why not. As soon as he's the place ahead of you in the queue, the sooner he gets the treatment, the sooner they'll be able to do you. You need to make it sound like a case for dry rot. Excuse me, please. I'll be with you in a minute. You should come and watch. All right, one. Well. And then you'll know what you're letting yourself in for. I know what I'm letting myself in for. Looks like Samantha's tumbled it in all, didn't it? She's just late. She's always late. Beefing already, eh? It'll be my wife doesn't understand me before you've even got the ring on her finger. The ring? You got the ring? Of course I have. Very close at hand. Look, you're meant to be on my side today, Fred. That's what the best man's for. Best man? Yeah, well, you know, equality and that. Well, she's a mate. I know the best, so... And like the best. Hello, Hello, Harry. I call upon these persons here present to witness... I call upon those persons here present to witness... ...that I, Peter Hendrik van der Velde... ...that I, Peter Hendrik van der Velde... ...do take thee, Min Kwong Yu Lin Tai... ...do take thee, Min Kwong Yu Lin Tai... ...to be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Please say after me... ...I do solemnly declare... I do solemnly declare... Nice and early. I'm not queuing up for this lot, right? Here we go again. I should have said yes to you. Oh, it's so romantic. This is Fred, my best mate. Hi. Hello. No photographs. You must be crazy. Take photograph? Yeah. Uh, I would like for um, a souvenir. Sure. If they're standing, he was. And there's me, all set to put my money on Mike and Samantha having the quickest marriage on record. I mean, Mike never looked at Samantha during the ceremony the way the Dutch boy did. Mind you, one look at Samantha and you can understand why. But the Dutch boy, oh, that was lovely. It just goes to show, doesn't it, Maggie, that not everyone is in it for tax benefits. Although, when she ran off, he made no move to go after her. Although well, someone did. A guy in a red jag. Peter just stood there. No, yeah, Peter, is it? Peter Hendrik van der Velde, age 23. He's only been here two weeks. And her name's Ming Kuang Yulin Tai, 25, Chinese, born in Hong Kong. You read the marriage certificate? I believe and signed it, didn't I? I was a witness. Responsibility, Maggie. It's part of the old premarital, was it? Please? Wedding nerves. Oh, I'd known some brides all doled up in the back of the bridal car. They take one look at that place and drive straight on. Only around the block, of course. And uh, after the wedding, do you see that too? Well, I suppose for some, I don't know what's hidden till it's happened. Got it all sorted out in the old bridal chamber, eh? What is the damage to the photograph? Damage? I, I pay. Oh, I'm with you, yeah. What's the damage? Yeah, well, it's uh, £2.50 for the pair. I could have done a really nice portfolio on you two. By the looks of her, you're a very lucky fellow. I will be when I find her. What, are you saying you've not found her yet? Could you direct me to 345B Station Road? Only I know this town not so very well. Well, you should have gone round there straight away, mate, if that's where she hangs out. She's run off back to Mum. You never went after her. Well, if I knew where she lives, then of course I would have gone there first. But uh, Mr. Al Jarvis lives there? I've been given his name as a private investigator. You think he will help me find her? Well, he'll look at a price. Any price. I'm not so skint. Worth finding, isn't she? My wife. How did you know we were staying here, then? Oh, it's on the marriage certificate we both signed yesterday. Resident here for 15 days, it said. Yeah, he's Dutch. Not that you'd have guessed it. Nice lad like that. He looked English enough to me. I don't usually take in foreigners. But you can't 
Yes? Where the hell are you? I'm on a case. I'll call you back in five minutes. What case? All right, I'll call you back in two. It's my radio. They're playing my tune. Did you meet the girl while he was staying here? Never set eyes on her before yesterday morning. When he asked you to be a witness at the wedding? Mind you, he told me he was going to get married almost as soon as he got here. As I said to him, why don't you spend your honeymoon night here? It's a lovely double bed he's got in that room up there. Or was, until my Sydney went to roving. Until then... Well, we're all at it these days, aren't we? Not in this house, we're not. So, you don't know where they've been meeting, then? Well, I asked him that last night when she ran off. At her place, I thought. But he didn't seem to know where that was. 13 Rochester Avenue was the address she gave. Did he try looking for her there yesterday? And guess what? Don't tell me. I've checked it out. You'd think a road the length of Rochester Avenue would have a number 13, wouldn't you? They're very superstitious at number 12A. <laughs> anyway, I've put him in touch with a detective I know. Well, not know exactly. I mean, one doesn't, does one? Ooh, detectives. You ever met any? Private eyes, I call them. Peeping Toms is what I say. Anyway, Al Jarvis is a cut above some people I know. Station Road, isn't he? Is that where Peter's gone now? You know, your motor couldn't have to do with a clean. Tell him to call me. Frederica Smith. Eyes. So, we could have a client if I get there soon enough. There's enough work here in the office, Fred. Yesterday's as well as today's. You know me and paperwork, Maggie. We just don't hit it off. Goes back to potty training. You ask my mum. Fred, this is Prue. Who is this client, anyway? The Dutchman. We've got to help him find his wife. He's asked you to? No, but he will when I find him. So where did you think she was living? There. 13 Rochester Avenue. You never met her there before? I never met her at all until yesterday morning. When you married her? So she could become Dutch citizen. Are you married? Once was enough for me. For me too, I am sure. Who put you up to this? Put up? What is put up? Who got you to marry the Chinese bird? Bloke I met in Germany. He paid me 300 pounds so that she could marry me and then go to Holland with the wedding certificate. Maybe you should look for her there, then. But how to find my wife in the whole of Holland? Well, it's not so big. You can see the old country from the air. Probably find her with a telescope. The Chinese stick out a bit, won't they? Ping Pong Yu Lin Tai. Look, I can put you in touch with a very good agent in Rotterdam. Why don't you get back home to your village straight away and I'll have him call you there? But in this town, surely there must be someone who can tell me where she's gone. This is where she must inhabit, or why was I sent here to marry her? Why do you want to find her anyway? You've been paid, haven't you? She is my wife! Who presumably is already making arrangements to divorce you. That is just why I need to find her very quick, to persuade her not to. You think you'll succeed? I let her go? I would not be such a fool. She's fantastic, no? Yeah, but does she think you are? I mean, if you find her, do you really imagine she's going to take you in her arms till death us do part? I am sure. When she gets to know me, she took one look at you and ran off. Oh, come on, mate, you did it for money. That's all there was in it for you, and you know it.
How much? Three ninety-nine a pair. They are rubbish. So they're cheap. I give you five pounds for three, and it's a deal, yeah? No. What do you want a tatty old pair of jeans for? Oh, hi. Good to see you again. Fantastic. <laughs> Come on, you people always ask twice more than what you expect to get for them. I'll come back when it rains. You'll part with them then. We won't fit you anyway. No, no, not for wearing. Trading. Of one pair of jeans, I last one week in India. You better come in. That Dutch boy. Get him out of my hair. He wants to find his lady love. Well, I can't help him. Should he go to the police? He didn't seem too keen on that. I should think not. Oh, I didn't think you'd think so. That's why I sent him to you in the first place. Look, Al, I don't know what's going on, but when you came to me saying there'd be a Dutch boy coming here wanting lodgings for a fortnight, I didn't ask any questions, did I? Because if anyone came questioning me later, I would know nothing. Just tell him to get off on his travels and forget all about her. Someone else was offering to help him this morning. She left her card. Yeah, eyes, they call themselves. <laughs> I was in Germany, and I met this English lorry driver who gave me a lift. Uh, Bill was his name. And he knew this Chinese girl who wanted to get to Holland, only she had no papers. So he asked me to marry her. Okay, I said. Anything to oblige for a lift, eh? Yeah, yeah. And 300 pounds by the time I'd raised him to his limit. She would give me a divorce, he said. And besides, I'd never been to England before. I went to take a look at your Buckingham Palace the other day. I've seen better. Well, you know how this works. Looks like you do. It's not empty yet. I generally find a weak spot once I really get to know them. feet the nearer I got there. I have not seen my family in two years. I write. Well, sometimes. Hey, I think my mother would have a good laugh if she knew I was married. Especially to a girl you met for the first time at the registry office. I'm sure she'd fall about. Anyone at all? Just me. Where's Bill? Heading up north. He phoned from Chatham half an hour ago. He got held up by customs at Dover, he said. Won't be back till the morning now. Well, I've got to see him. Stay the night, then. He should be here by eight. Not too sure how pleased he'd be to find you here at that time. Still, why do you want him, anyway? I doubt that he's got a phone in his truck, Al. I'm not trying to phone him. Girls like men I meet in their own villages. They all want to go to Europe. The way they live out there, I don't blame them. Can you change these into paper for me, Shane? Fred, you have more? Have you showed them her photograph? I have. I've been to all the Chinese establishments. I was even around them the two weeks I was waiting. Trying to find which one was going to be my wife. If you knew she only wanted your name, then why were you so surprised when she ran off? But she didn't have to be in such a hurry, did she? She could have spared me half an hour, so maybe I could buy her a beer. I'd even want to spend a few days with her. Oh, but you're right. Mr. Jarvis said the same. She's not going to be interested in me, even if I did find her. So I will make again for India and try to forget her. Thanks, Jim. OK, so you've got to go to work, but just don't come over this way for a while. No, no, darling, it's just a precaution, that's all. Darling? It's all right, she's married. So am I. To a Dutchman who's crazy about her. <laughs> Why don't you go home to Mum? Because in Holland, I would be thinking of her every minute of the day. I wonder who she is. That is something I will always wonder. Even if I'm never to see her again. I would like to know something about her. 
She's my wife. There must be someone in this town who knows her. Look, I left a card like this one at your place this morning. We've got better connections than Jarvis, so if he can't help you, why don't you pop in and see us? Like tomorrow? Yes, sir. May we help you? I have an appointment. Of course. It's Mr. Bromyard, isn't it? Broomyard. And I'm surprised you've forgotten me, considering it's only a month ago since we met. Oh, would you come this way? Not a very promising start to the investigation my board of directors is thinking of entrusting you with. We do have quite a number of clients, Mr. Broomyard. Who look like me? Into industrials, are you? Overseas companies scared some greedy little English temp is selling their secrets for the price of a jet set holiday. <laughs> Still, that's where the money lies these days. You can stick your matrimonials on. Anyway, I won't keep you. Just popped in to pay my respects. Three attractive girls setting up in the business. That's just the kind of image we want to see in the profession these days. <laughs> By the way, uh, do you maintain your own equipment? Well, we have to. Without a man about the house. Not just a pretty face, eh? <laughs> Still, if your uh, telex plays up, or any of the electronic wizardry we all depend on these days, I know a fellow locally who's very reliable and discreet. Does that ever let you down? We generally dial faults if the phone's out of order. Oh, well, glad to see you making a go of it. I'll do what I can to put business your way. Oh, Fred, this is Mr. Jarvis. He's been giving us some tips. Fred? Short for Frederica. My mother had hoped for another boy. Good news for the lad she didn't have one, I reckon. Ah, oh, well. Au revoir, ladies. And if you ever find yourselves in a tight spot, you know where to turn. So kind. My pleasure. Mutual aid is what it's all about. And if we ever happen to be involved in the same case, I hope we'll cooperate, right? See you around, Fred. You too, Inspector. Well, what do you expect? You were in court the other week trying to nail that copper. Anyway, what's he come here for? As long as you keep him out of there, he might prove quite useful one day. That creep? There's certain things best left to a man, you know. Like what? Like impersonating one, if you ever need to. Frederica, I've been taking a look at your expenses. Looks as though old Giles is looking at yours. This car's tucked away up the lane. He's hoping I haven't spotted it's his jag. And never mind Mr. Jarvis now. Well, he's a villain. And he's scared we're onto him. For what? Fixing a marriage. So that some Chinese girl can get herself over to Holland as a Dutch citizen. It was his car that was parked outside the registry office when she ran off. And it was his car that followed her. Is this one for the police? In the interests of the taxpayer, we should leave them something to do. Prudence has been telling me about your Dutchman. Have you got a proper contract with him? Not yet. Don't tell me you're looking for him in home office time, just because you fancy him. Well, he's quite fanciable. But as for looking for his bride, he already signed up Jarvis. Oh, so you didn't get to him first after all. Well, let's us out, Fred. We have no evidence that Jarvis is up to no good. Probably resent you muscling in on his case. Who is this girl? Min Kwong Yulin Tai from Hong Kong. From Hong Kong? Mm. I can tell you her father's name. That was on the marriage certificate as well. <laughs> they all look alike to Westerners, don't they? Dark hair, narrow eyes, not to mention a touch of sulphur in the skin, 
as distinct from the tar brush. <laughs> Malaysian, perhaps, but um, definitely not Chinese. Leaving. I decided to take your advice. Sensible lad. So I am off just as soon as I find out who she is. And I have someone else to help me find her. Huh. Miss Frederica Smith, from Eyes. Well, at least she does not want me off home until I find out who I am married to. I only want you off home because that's what I thought your wife was. Aren't you meant to drive on the left in this country? As a matter of fact, she's in the south of France. Marseille. <laughs> I remember her. She may not be Chinese after all. Ethnologist, are you? I'm just a registrar. And they all look alike to me anyway. Orientals. Brides. She claims to be born in Hong Kong. Well, where she was born is no concern of mine. Just as long as she's not been married before. They can be red, white and blue and wanted for murder. They have the same right to marry as you do. Catch me. At least the Dutchman could speak good English. The last one to marry an oriental girl in here was German. And until I got an interpreter, I don't think he had the foggiest notion what was going on. Do they often marry foreigners, then? Is that a crime? Well, it is to acquire foreign citizenship. As long as they believe at the time that their marriage is for life. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> if I allowed myself such doubts, Miss Smith, my conscience would prevent me from marrying anyone at all. However, if you care to take a look at the current register, you will find a Curious number of weddings lately between Chinese girls and either Dutchmen or Germans. But if it leads to these girls getting out of the country, frankly, I'd have thought that was something to be encouraged. At least they're not marrying Englishmen. There aren't many sailings direct to Rotterdam. She could have gone from Dover to Ostend. Yeah, well, she didn't. My agent over there picked her out soon enough. She was the only Chinese-looking girl among the passengers. And she had no reason to deny she was Mrs. Van der Velde once she got ashore. She's proud of her Dutch citizenship. How did you get in without a passport? She borrowed one from a French girl whose family came from Indochina. Well, with that lot, you can't tell one from another if they're roughly the same age and you've only got a passport photo to go on. Anyway, with uh, French papers, she could get to Marseilles, which is where she wanted to go. Why not to Holland? Ask her. Uh, if you want her address, it's on that pad over there. My uh, colleague said she'd be pleased to talk to you if you insisted. She'll be on this number till late. You're not there? No. Well, she can give it you herself. Uh, bonjour, madame. Uh, Pardonnez-moi, je veux parler au madame van der Velde. Sir? Lynn? It is Peter. Your husband, remember? But what's the matter? You got your money. And you have your Dutch nationality. So we're both happy. Fantastic. Why are you in France? If it's the divorce that you're worried about... Divorce? Cannot we have some marriage, too? It usually comes first. Where can I meet you? But I'm in France. Marseille, what is the address? 15, Rue de la Madeleine, Marseille. You think I make Paris this evening, so I hitch a lift on the auto route tonight? Well, Dover to Calais is no problem. You probably get to Paris in time to get the overnight train. I'll be with you this time tomorrow, Min, okay? <laughs> Fantastic. Listen. I love you. Hey, what do you think my mother would say if I walk in after two years with a Chinese wife? when it's really Holland or Germany that they're set on. Well, presumably because immigration control over here is just a bit more lax if you're coming from a British colony. I imagine there are plenty who marry Englishmen. Not on this list. OK, I only checked with three registry offices, and in all 15 cases, these Chinese girls have married either Germans or Dutchmen. 
And if Nigel's right, they may not even be Chinese. Well, Min presented her birth certificate. The registrar told me. And if it's a forgery... I mean, why pretend to be someone who shouldn't be here at all? Ask Maggie. She's got a theory of her own about this. She's in the... Impersonation? Peter! She's in Marseille. Well, that's in France. You have been doing your chopping too, yeah? Mr. Jarvis, he tracked her down for me. Looks like he has got good connections after all. He's having you on. Having me on what? He's conning you, fooling you. But I just speak to her. She's expecting me there tomorrow morning. It is fantastic, yeah? Mr. Jarvis has reserved me on the hoverboat from Dover to Calais. So I will catch a bus to the autobahn and then hitch a lift down to the coast from there. How much is he charging you to find her? Six pounds and fifty pence. For phone calls. Plus VAT. Right, right. He is making a lot out of you, isn't he? How do you know you spoke to her in Marseille? You think I did not? If you know where she really is, tell me. Because my bus leaves in 15 minutes, and I have to be on it if I'm going to be in Dover by 8, and Paris by midnight, and also Marseille by tomorrow morning. I'm sure your wife would mind you being late. Yes, but you are not married to her, are you? You can afford to be wrong. I cannot. If I am being had on, then I can always come back. Well, cut your losses and take a slow boat to India. Yeah. Fred Smith from Eyes. We're in a tight spot. That's quite a list. Oh, that girl could be any one of them. How can she have a record? Even if she'd only been done for shoplifting, she'd have found herself deported if she'd been here illegally. I don't think she is here illegally. So why this marriage charade? I'd really like pictures transmitted to the whole list, but they'll kick at the expense. You'd need my authority to get any one of them. That's why I sent for you, Nigel. I'm not an errand boy, Margaret. Yes, but doors do open for you, don't they? I'll settle for the three whose last known addresses are in our area. If 15-room Madeline's just an hole in the wall, or she opts it before he gets there, it's no skin off my nose. If we ever found ourselves working on the same case, you said. The case is closed. And I didn't need a computer to track her down with, neither. Nor any of that expensive hardware, which might explain that fancy aerial you've got on your roof. Just the good old blower. I've been at this game a little bit longer than you, darling. There's no substitute for experience. You learned that. Why don't you want Peter to find her, Mr. Jarvis? Is she a friend of yours? They can't stick anything on her just for marrying him, you know, whatever her motives. Unless she wasn't who she said she was. She presented her birth certificate. How do you know? You have to. No, you don't. Besides, what does a birth certificate prove? In every other country in Europe, you have to have a passport or ID card to get married. A registrar told me that. A photograph to show you really are who you claim to be. But in jolly old England, you could use anyone's birth certificate, as long as you roughly fit the facts that are on it. Who would want to do that? Whoever you are, your birth registers somewhere. But it explains why they come to England, though, doesn't it? Not having a passport or ID card to get married anywhere else. Listen, I don't want to be inhospitable, but I have a lot of work to do. Come to think of it, they don't even have to come to England. Just have their birth certificate sent. And Bill could do that. Bill? Then all he's got to do is... Well, they all look alike. Look. 
Why don't you go and play detectives back at the ranch with the other lady sleuths? I'm not sure I want him to find her now. And if you're mixed up in this, which I think you are, right up to your neck, I can understand why you don't. Whatever you're on about, I'm not bothered. Get it? I think you will be when he finds her. And so will he. He's married to a woman he's never set eyes on. Not even at the wedding. Not heading for Dover. Bill! <laughs> well, that's great, fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Van de Veld, on your way home, are you? <laughs> I was looking out for you the other night. I thought you might be having a look back. <laughs> Come on, we'll take that. Pop in, eh? It's a racket that's been used for refugees before. They somehow managed to get to Germany or Holland, where they're approached by an illicit organization that offers them German or Dutch citizenship in return for a thousand pounds and the loan of their birth certificate. This is then sent to some operator in England. Al Jarvis. He may be the link man here, but there are others scattered about the country. The link man's job is to find someone to impersonate the refugee. She then presents the birth certificate and fixes up a wedding with a German or a Dutchman already recruited. By Bill whose passport details she's been supplied with. After the wedding... Off goes the marriage certificate to the woman abroad who's paid for it, from which the Dutch bridegroom has never even seen. Not that he minds. He's been paid. Oh, Peter minds. Where is he? He's gone to Dover. Well, you let him go. Who couldn't hold him? But they'll call us from Hoverport as soon as he shows up. So what do we tell him? To change course for Holland, because that's where his wife is. The one with the wedding certificate, anyway. In Holland? She's never been anywhere else. And that's why Jarvis doesn't want him to go there. The one I want to find is the girl he thinks he's married to. The stand-in at the registry office. I don't think she's gone that far. Come and look. Well, you found her. I think so, but you can identify her. Real name, Tam Yubon. Malayan. Convicted for obtaining money by false pretenses. Someone had her knocking on doors with a collecting box for the Ethiopian relief. She made quite a haul. Who's gone to fetch her? Where? Chatham. Works in a sweatshop. <laughs> Tam? You sell your machine. I don't pay you to chat to boyfriends. You chat later. And what do you want? I'd like to talk to one of your workers if you can speak to Not in my time, lady. Out. They knock off at 6.30. We talk later, right? I'll have to talk to you instead. My time's money, too. About your work conditions here, just the one entrance, no windows, no fire escape. I could have you closed down. Closed down? You do like he says. Get out. We like conditions here. And also about the money your workers get paid. Are you from the union? We don't want no union here. We don't want no strikes here. We want to work. Come on, lady. Oh, I surrender. You can get back to your treadmill now. So if anyone comes asking questions before then, you know speak it the English, right? I'll pick you up at half six. All right, if she stays here, I can't risk having her at my place. Who is she? She's in a bit of trouble. Got to lie low. I expect she's used to that if she's one of your women. She's not. She's one of Bill's. I'll go and fetch her. Bill's? Over in Chatham. Hang on! You telling me Bill's got a woman at Chatham? Where do you think he sleeps when I'm here? In his cab? Yes! It's a shame I'm not heading south. I could have given you a lift all the way to Marseille. Where are you headed? Over Ostend Ferry. And up to Hamburg. 
So you go through Holland? Yeah. Listen, you've got to get yourself to Marseille. If you catch the 830 hovercraft to Calais, you'll be fine. Do you think my wife is in Marseille? Well, if that geezer, what's his name, says, I mean... But what do you think? It was you that got me to marry her so she could become Dutch citizen. Why has she gone to France? Look, all I do is arrange for the bridegrooms, like your lads like yourself. Get the passport details and fix up a place to stay until you're married. Who is it behind it all? Come on now. That would be Italian, wouldn't it? But now she's Mrs. Peter von der Veld, she has to be in Holland. The hovercraft, you can sail without me. I catch the ferry to Ostend with you, okay? Sure. You can drop me off in Holland tomorrow. That Mr. Jarvis, he was definitely helping me on. Duchess, what brings you here? I can make my own inquiries without help, you know. The police will want to question her. That's exactly where I'm taking her. The police? What for? For perjury, conspiracy and fraud. I think you can leave this to me, Mr Jarvis. You're not even an ex-police inspector. But he said you're not police. It's called citizen's arrest. your husband. I've got the girl. What time does the hovercraft sail? 8.30. Should just make it. I may say that when I told my superiors at HO that this racket seems now to have been enlarged to embrace some of our oriental friends from the Far East, they were most concerned. I told them I found 15 cases in this area alone between visiting foreigners You and... found them? We work as a team, Frederica. The proof's taken her to Dover so that your Dutch friend can meet her in town. Turn the girl in, have you? Immigration racket, exposed by lady amateurs and one ex-pro. Another feather in your cap, eh? Mutual aid, I said, not pinching my bloody living. He came to me to find his wife, and when I did... You told him she was in Marseille. Yeah, so when I really found out she was working in Chatham, I'd go and get her only to have your lady snatch her from under me. There's plenty of witnesses back there to say I was already taking her to the law myself before you lot crashed in for the pickings. And whatever she says in court, there's nothing anyone can pin on me in all this, even if I do know a whole lot more about it than you kids do with your fancy toys and your smart motors and your rich sugar daddy to finance you. As it happens, I'm just a client. What, with a Daimler and a chauffeur? All the big money's outside the country these days. So you set these kids up as a front for whatever it is you're playing at, out here on the river with them aerials on the roof. I've got the odd contact in Whitehall who might be very interested in you lot. Get that? Yeah, bend the right ear, and I could have the home office sorting this place out. So, what's the deal then? Keep me out of it. You can have all the glory and all the facts. Well, I think we've got all the facts, Mr Jarvis. You don't know where the marriage certificates get sent to on the continent, or who finds the lads to put themselves up at the wedding shops. Bill does that. And Bill knows who's behind this racket. Bill who? You still write your parents then, do you? Mm, sometimes. Where do you think you are at the moment? <laughs> Kashmir. Kashmir? <laughs> All 
Right, now you get your ticket over there. You right for money? Yeah, yeah, not so skint. Uh -huh. Well, don't be too long, will you? They start loading soon. I just make telephone call home. Listen, you don't want to do that. Why don't you give them a surprise? Come on, I'll go with you. Thanks. That was passport control, Dover. The hovercraft just left. Peter wasn't on it. It must be. Where's Bill taking him? Bill? Of course, Bill. You would have told him your trick to get Peter to Marseille. You made his travel arrangements. You even sent him to the transport cafe so Bill knew where to pick him up. So, yes, where has Bill taken him? I thought to Dover. So you get to Calais and then to Paris. What's the registration number? Is it a deal? Like hell, it's a deal. If anything happens to that boy... Happens? What do you want about? A boy who hasn't seen his family for two years isn't going to be missed. What's the registration number? <laughs> RSU. They could be on the ferry for Ostend that leaves in 10 minutes. If not, they haven't left the country yet. But I may have done by the time I found out. Tell Nigel to get me immediate clearance to go on board. He's doing that now. I'll send you a postcard from Ostend. There's a bit of a wind blowing up. Could be in for a rough crossing. Then it's not too good. I get a sickness at the sea. Oh, you'll be all right on deck. What about passports? No passports, you've been told. Check it out. Oh, come on. Look, there's plenty of time for all that. Let's go and have a drink. I could make my fare to India on this lot. Sooner than Peter. Come on. This man got some mates to work on this tub. Let's have a drink with him. Yeah? Yeah, Say. Tell you what, Pete. These ferries would be bankrupt if it weren't for our trucks. Yeah. I'd do this run regular. Fruit machines, you wouldn't catch me up there with those day trippers, I tell you. <laughs> Got everything I need down here. It's all right as long as you don't take it short. Come on, have another drink. 
<laughs> Come on, please relax, please. There's a lorry driver on board called Bill Fawcett, and I think a Dutchman called Peter van der Gold. Could you put out a call for them? On what authority? I have to talk to them. I think I have to tell my father. I hate my father. He turned me out, which is why I went backpacking. Then he left my mother. But now, now I have to see him. Well, you find your wife soon enough by yourself? <laughs> Not as soon as he will. He is superintendent of police. Oh, I don't think I feel so good. Well, don't you start throwing up down here. Come on, up you come. That's it, upstairs. Fresh air, that's what you need. Come on, up on me. Same boat. I was right. Oh, come on. Let me go, man. You for a look at what? Throw him overboard. He fell. Well, he's plastered. He fell from up there. Well, I don't know who he is. He's just a lad I gave a lift to. He's. He's Dutch, I think. He's dead. I've just been told that girl's going to be let off with a suspended sentence. And what about that bastard, Bill? Manslaughter. Manslaughter? It was murder! Impossible to prove. Besides, he's agreed to name names. So what you're saying is it's worth killing someone to keep these Asians out of Europe? We don't make the rules, Fred. Should have called the police. 